but you ain't direct. I got you. About to get some. Here they are. We got them. We got them. Oh, that looks good, guys. That looks really crisp and clean. I know I have this green up. Yep. You can't hear any audio? Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Let me make sure it's 
Jesus. All right, y'all, we are getting ready to get this thing kicked off. It is the origins of the investigation. You all take a moment, share, bro. Take a moment to share the broadcast. Take a moment and share the broadcast. Thank you. Go to your Facebook page, like, and share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. Have you taken a moment to share the broadcast? Take a moment, share the broadcast. Who trying to block it before it starts? What? Okay, y'all, uh, let me come in. Yeah, I don't think you were in, okay? Yes, it does. Yes, 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 it does. Uh, I got to come change it from there. Y'all take a moment. We'll be right back in one second. Thing. 
What's up, Chicago? It's your man, Maze Jackson. Take a moment, share the broadcast. Take a moment and share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. Oh, my goodness. Take a moment, share the broadcast. We are about to get this thing started. It is the Illinois Minotti Podcast. I apologize for the hiccups. I'm trying to do too much of everything all at once. But if you can just give me a hot second, we can get this thing cracking and get it started. It is the Illinois Minotti Podcast. Take a moment, share the broadcast, share the broadcast, and share the broadcast. All right, take a moment, share the broadcast. Are you rocking with us? I need something to prop this screen up with. Ah, it's got one. All right, well, let's get this thing cracking. Let's take a moment, share the broadcast. Take a moment, share the broadcast. Take a moment and share the broadcast. Are you all with me? We Are we live? All right, can you hear me? Um, I am not going to probably be able to rest until I know this will is made sure that Carrie uh, got her Uber. But, y'all, we are rocking and rolling. Today's edition of the Illinois Minotti Podcast is brought to you by none other than me, Ms. Jackson. Did you take care of it for me? What'd you do? Did you? Oh. Okay, and he'll get her there? All right. Did you tell her? Okay. Give me. Okay. Tell her that it's on his way. He'll be there quickly. Okay. All right, y'all. Take a moment, share the broadcast. Take a moment, share the broadcast. Take a moment and share the broadcast. We are live, live, live. Uh, you gave her the, you gave him that right address, and he said he'd take care of it. All right, y'all. I'm sorry. I apologize for this, but uh, family issues. So let's get this thing started. Take a moment, share the broadcast. How many of you all have enjoyed the Illinois Minotti podcast? Have you been enjoying the podcast over the last three? This is actually our third episode, so I'm pretty fired up. Uh, we got our lighting together. We got our sound together. Now if we can only get our timing together, we'd be extra on time. Um, one of these days, I am going, when I'm famous, I'm going to have people that do all of this stuff for me, right? I was uh, busy trying to coordinate a, uh, someone saying the sound could go a little bit louder. Uh, I'm not about to tr lead no coup, Alvin E. Norton. No sound, no video error. Well, Carol, then you got to restart your computer. You know what? Okay. y'all. I hate when y'all do that. I really do. Turn it up, check all your stuff, and do it. But when you put that up, you know that I'm looking at you, and I'm trying to make sure you're straight so I can't get cracking on the show because you're telling me. Check it out. And clearly you're getting something because I'm looking at you typing. You get nothing. All right. It's Talk Chicago. Well, it's not Talk Chicago. This is the, w the Illinois Minotti podcast welcome to season two episode three of illinois minati inside illinois political secret society now as always i am Maze jackson uh and i am the host of the wvon morning show every day monday through friday six to nine with my co-host sonia escobar because <laughs> she's there always on time and she's actually here with us today she is running the soundboard so shout out to my girl Sonia. Also, can't forget my man Todd Stroger, who is rock, who rocks with me in the morning. He just gets there a little bit late. What can we say? Uh, I want to encourage you to tune in every Thursday night uh, through the end of the legislative session. That's May thirty first, where we will be doing um, pot, doing this podcast, Illinois Minati, so you can understand what is going on in Illinois, what's going on in Springfield, and how it affects us from a black person's perspective. Speaking of Springfield, one more time, big shout out to State Representative Cam Buckner for the What's in It for the Black People Bill, uh, HB 4865. Shout out to State Representative Jahan Gordon Booth, who has joined on board with us, LaShawn Ford, who has joined on board with us as well. Now, Mary Flowers jumped on. I hope she's not going, um, I hope she sticks with the bill, man. Hope she ain't trying to play us. All right. Uh, and while we're at it, let's get some of the housekeeping out of the way. Uh, can we please take a moment? Can you take a moment and like the Maze Jackson page? Take a moment and like the Maze Jackson page. Uh, please like the What's In It For The Black People page as well as, can you follow me on Twitter? 
at, I don't tweet that much, but I need y'all to follow me on Twitter. So I'm going to start getting my tweets up. Uh, don't tell me, Shannon, to stop reading the comments, because that's what I do. I got to read the comments. All right, plus, uh, it's Maze Jackson said on Instagram. Maze Jackson said on Instagram. You know, I was thinking about Illinois Minotti, the podcast. You know, I had a big week this week on the interview side, right? A uh, big week on the interview side because uh, you all know what? I had um, Governor Rob Goyevich on the show this week, right? Did you see that? That I had Governor Rob Bogoyevich on the show, and Governor Bogoyevich actually um, agreed with the title of Illinois Minotti. If you remember, he said, actually, when I broke it down to him, he said, you're actually right. There is a system set up in Springfield where everybody gets rich. Oh, well, not everybody. If you're part of the chosen crew, then you get rich, wealthy, and you get to do well for yourself. And the rest of us are victims, victims, victims. I don't like to be a victim. So let me tell you all what. Uh, we are going to break down what has been going on. I'm looking for something really quickly, and then I think we can go ahead and get this thing cracking. Um, hmm. <laughs> How you all feeling tonight? Who is out there rocking with us? Let me say what's up to all the people that are tuned in with us, rocking with us tonight. What's up, Shannon Young? What is up? Hold on. What's up, Shannon Young? What's up, Albany Norton? What up, Tiger Lily? Uh, what up, John Rembert? What up, Yvonne Dabala? What up, uh, Felicia Lucas Miles? Carol Zwizek? What up, B Mo? What up, Alvin? What up, Shannon, Laverne, Smith, Bell? All right, y'all, I'm through with the names. I'm tired. I'm ready to get in. Hey, y'all, we got to get out of here. So for just 169, You straight? We ready? All right, well, let's do this. Let's get this thing cracking. All right. Uh, so when we left off last week, where did we leave off last week? Uh, I think I had given you all the breakdown of how Pat Doherty hooked up with the lobbyists to plunder safe speed. Is that, is that kind of where I left it off? Uh, Pat Doherty, remember, don't forget Pat Doherty. I never forget my friends, uh, but Pat Doherty hooked up with the lobbyists to get inside the safe speed where they rape, robbed, and pillaged the company. You know I love saying rape, robbed, and pillaged. I got to stop saying that, though, because I feel bad. Um, so I want to do full disclosure one more time. I am doing some consulting for safe speed. I try to make sure that I am straight up and honest with you all all the time. Um, the reason that I am, but this is a completely unauthorized podcast, completely unauthorized, unauthorized. Uh, it has been a combination of things that I have. Well, you know what? Let me back up. In case you're wondering how I know it is because I spent some time lobbying in Springfield and working at the, uh, with the group that is at the center of this investigation, right? So part of the reason that I felt the need to do this, this podcast, and I'll be honest with you, part of the reason that I decided to do some consulting with Safe Speed was because I realized that they were being victimized and they didn't even know it. Um, and they were, being, they were getting taken apart like so many companies in Illinois do, but they didn't know what to do. And when I saw what was happening, because I had worked in the system, I said, hey, here's some things you all need to do. Now, obviously, really just helping them navigate and understand the space. But I want to be clear. Everything that we talk about is my personal interpretation. I am not proclaiming that these are the facts. These are, um, these are this is my interpretation of the things that I've read, heard, witnessed, combined with some testimonials, a little snooping around, plus some confidential sources. Does that make sense? So, it, I'm, I'm not telling you that everything you're hearing is factual. I am telling you how things work from the position if you were on the inside, how you saw it. Okay? So, and then I bring them all together to bring you Illinois Minotti and take you inside Illinois' political secret society. So tonight we are going to discuss, you know, we have gotten so much going on, but you, you know, I feel like an X-Men movie, the origins, the origins, the origins of the investigation. Right now we are in the middle of what could be one of the most extensive federal probes we've ever seen. And what I've tried to do is be able to break this stuff down for you so that you all can see beyond what you're just reading in the paper. I think, I, I, you know what really motivated me to do this? I'm going to say this one more time. 
And I, you know, I hope I didn't offend anybody, but I saw the string map that the Chicago Tribune did this year in in this, in February when I had done so many more, when I had to- taken so much more information all the way back in the past. All right. So tonight. So let me back up because what the, we talked about Marty and the mole. So I introduced you to Senator Sandoval, who I again told you was a friend. Um, I also talked. I also told you about uh, the mole. I also talked to you about the lobbyists and about Pat Doherty. Uh, can you please uh, reach out to Carrie and let her know that he is there now? All right, y'all. Tonight, so last week I left you a little bit of a cliffhanger because if you remember, I talked about the lawyer that connected all of the dots. So tonight, we are going to break down the story, and I am going to take that. I'm going to help you understand the lawyer. Oh, hold on. I'm trying to do my switcher. So I'm going to help you understand the lawyer. See that? Then I'm going to try and help you understand, uh uh-oh, the law firm. And after I try to help you understand the law firm, then I'm going to try to help, uh uh-oh, hold on. Here it is. Here's the law firm. I want you to understand the law firm. And then after you understand the law firm, I'm then going to show you the connections. How these connections all tied to the federal investigation of Marty Sandoval. But to begin this, I got to take you back. Can you go back? We'll start with the lawyer, and I'll take you back to late 2010, early 2011, when I first heard the name Mike Delgado. Now pay attention, because this is important. It was in 2010, 2011, when I heard, first heard the name Mike Delgado. Now, where did I hear this name? I heard this name while I was working as a lobbyist at the Roosevelt Group. And what I remember about Mike Delgado is that every time I heard his name, a MF or a F or a some expletive was connected with his name because my partner at the time, Victor Reyes, was trying to wrest control of the, of the village of Cicero from Mike Delgado. Now you gotta understand, Mike Delgado was the attorney for the village of Cicero, and Victor had just realized that lobbying had become less lucrative, and he was growing his law firm and seeking to grow his business. And so what he wanted to do was go into the village of Cicero and take the business as a law firm. But unfortunately, For him, there was this young, pesky attorney, Mike Delgado, who had Cicero on lock. Now, you got to understand, remember how I told you how the lobbyists work on the campaigns to get the contracts? So as lobbyists, we all volunteered to work on Larry Dominic's campaign. And so as part of our reward, the ask was to become the attorney for, for the village. That didn't work because Mike had the business and so they wanted to give us the public affairs to do to do for the village. But Vic wasn't interested in that because when he realized that he could bill at two hundred or three hundred dollars an hour, you guys, you're killing my battery. Um at two hundred or three hundred an hour, um, he much would have preferred to work with Cicero, let me, I got a little bit of technical difficulty. Let me come back to you all. I'll be right back. What? 
Fuck what into it? Can you hear me? What happened to the lavalier? Mr. Adi will make sure you need power to it. Okay. okay I understand. It needs to be plugged in. So we don't have a USB for that. So you can go right from the iPad and right in front of you. is open goodness gracious all right can you hear me can you hear me can you hear me if you are tuned in can you hear me yeah i can see the levels on the uh okay all right y'all so i'm back all right so victor was upset because he wanted the work that mike delgado had because he recognized that mike delgado was making a ton more money than him because he was billing at an hourly basis. Can we hear? Are we good? Okay. Okay. So guys, now, so as I'm in the village of Cicero, y'all like Calabay. Um, as Victor is trying to take over the village of Cicero, he realizes that he is not going to be able to uproot young Mike Delgado. Uh, but I can always remember hearing, fucking Mike Delgado, fucking Mike Delgado. Now, you got to remember at the time that Victor was not only a lobbyist, but he had also just formed a new law practice that he was trying to get new business for. Uh, but it was clear in my mind at the Roosevelt Group that we did not like Mike Delgado. Does that make sense? But occasionally, uh, and inevitably, I told you, every time I heard the name Mike Delgado, I would hear an F-bomb attached to it. So you can imagine my surprise when Senator Sandoval called me on my cell phone and asked me to come to a meeting at Mike Delgado's office. And I said to myself, wait, Mike Delgado's office? I thought Vic hates Mike Delgado and the two of you are best friends. Well, and guys, this was a clue that Sandoval was going to have trouble in the future because Sandoval said, don't tell Vic because he keeps all the money to himself and we can make some on our own. Trust me, just come to the meeting. Well, I was like, well, hell, I mean, if Sandoval and he's best friends, I'm going to show up at the meeting and find out what's going on. So later that week, I headed out to Delgado's law office in Berwyn and there it sat all by itself. Uh, uh, with the big D on the front of the building. I'll never forget that. I remember I was driving by and I saw the big D on the building. Uh, and I, you could tell like it wasn't one of those big downtown law firms. But when you walked into the office, you knew that he was making some money. Maybe not like Winston and Star money, but he was making some good money. And when I walked in, Sandoval was there to greet me where he ushered me into a conference room where there was one other black guy One other white guy and another uh, White guy seated now the white guy the seated white guy never really said much and we'll come back to him a little bit later now Then entered the fast-talking flashy Italian lawyer Mike Delgado and he was not shy about his clout or his ability to make more money and power. Now, remember this Delgado. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you. Because remember the last guy that he... 
Remember the Omar Manny guy and he was supposed to be Italian and then we found out he was Saudi Arabian? I haven't dug too deep, but I got to find out if Delgado is really an Italian or was he mixing it up or whatever. But I'm going to tell you this guy walks in the room and he was electric. What I soon learned was that Delgado was a municipal lawyer who was interested in doing electing politicians so he could build his power. Now, remember how the lobbyists worked? The lobbyists all the time would elect people so that they could then get them to vote their way. Well, imagine if you're the lawyer and you elect the mayor, then you want to become the village attorney. Because if you become the village attorney, you get you are basically the law department and it is full time billing. So imagine someone on the clock or two or three people on the clock. 24 hours a day times $400 an hour. Now multiply that times four, five, six, seven, ten 10 municipalities, right? And so what, what really had happened was Mike Delgado built his practice using the same premise as lobbyists. Elect the elected official that you want to have help, you want to help with, and then they'll come back and hire you as a lobbyist. Now one of the things that I think Mike had discovered that it took some of the other lobbyists a long time to discover was that if you are a lobbyist, you're working for small money and or you're working for a retainer and it's a finite amount. But if you are a lawyer, the billing never stops. It never stops. Think about it. They deal with every ticket, every easement, every everything that has to do with the village. And so what had happened was Mike had become a very powerful municipal attorney in the western sur suburbs. But now he was looking to expand his pie. And so as he was looking to expand his pie, he set his sights on the Southland. Why the Southland? Because the western suburbs was already chopped up. In the Southland, what you were seeing was a lot of new, a lot of white areas transitioning from white mayors to black mayors or Latino mayors who did not have those long-standing ties and relationships. And so Delgado decided that he was going to move into the Southland and start to take on some very powerful municipal attorneys. But to be able to do that, he needed to establish a beachhead. And you understand what I mean by a beachhead. He had to find a place where he thought he could win and then throw out the old government and jump and put his people in. Now, remember, once they now understand that as a municipal attorney and as the attorney for each town, Mike Delgado at this point oversees every contract coming in and going out. Right. So. He is now trying to acquire more places. He's been killing on the west, western suburbs, but now he's looking to move to the Southland. Enter Senator Sandoval. Senator Sandoval looking to make some money outside of Vic, and I want to make sure you all understand that. Vic and Sandoval used to have this fight all the time about Sandoval saying, man, you're making so much money. I'm doing all the work. I get you rich. I do all the work. And, and you heard Sandoval say it in some of, you saw it written in some of the tapes, but I actually heard him. He used to complain because he wanted to make more money. And John would always say, I mean, not John, and Victor would always say to him, if you want to make money, get out of elect elected office and you can make as much money as you want. Sandoval wanted both. With Vic, he couldn't get that. However, with this new Mike Delgado that he was trying to bring me into, he had already decided that he, they were going to take over Calumet City. So in the, in the meeting was the other black man was the black man that they were going to run for mayor of Calumet City. Now this black guy would be the candidate of the Latino and the Italian and the white guy, but they needed a black guy, me, Mays Jackson, to help him get elected, and Sandoval would help him get elected with the new Latinos that were moving in to the area. Am I making sense here? Am I making sense? Okay, so they were planning to take over Calumet City. 
and he planned to elect the mayor and then take over and run the town and the village. Now, his plan was to use me to recruit black voters, Sandoval to recruit the growing Latino population while he handled all of the election law, etc. It was the master plan at the end of this was Delgado took a big book. And I, you may have heard me describe this before. One day at this same meeting, Delgado, now there's one, two, three, four, five people sitting at the table. There is a book as big as a phone book. And Delgado takes the book and rips it three times and throws one part to the white guy, one part to Sandoval, and keeps a part for himself. And he says at the end of this election, you get everything in that book, you'll get everything in that book, and I'll get everything in this book. He said, Mays, you'll make $15,000 a month as the public affairs person. I'm like, well, shit. $15,000 a month. I don't want nothing in that book. I'll take the $15,000. But again, it was another example of being immature and not understanding how much and how high the stakes they were playing for was. So now the plan is to elect this state representative mayor. He becomes the mayor, brings us in, and we take over the town. Sound familiar? It's the same thing that the lobbyists were doing to the controversial companies. Wash, rinse, repeat. See how I get this? Now, it all eventually fell through because the state rep did not decide to run. But here was I was saying to myself, who is this 30 year old, 30 something year old white kid living the lifestyle of the rich and famous? He and I'm going to tell y'all, he looked and acted like one of those lawyers. You know what I'm talking about. You know the kind of lawyers I'm talking about. He looked like and acted like one of those lawyers. Now, I think he had figured it out, and he figured out that it was he was now, I'm going to tell you there are stories about his home. This guy was making a killing, fat cars, cribs, you name it, cigar bars, they had it all. And guess what? And he had become a wealthy man, and it made him the perfect partner for Sandoval, right? Sandoval, who was the senator, coincidentally, for all of the area, for all of the elected officials that Delgado happened to represent. So how much better could it be than to have this guy on your team? Now, remember Vic, excuse me, remember Sandoval wanted more than just campaign contributions. So how it actually worked with Delgado and Sandoval is Sandoval Delgado and Sandoval would take a town and then es essentially Sandoval would get the business from the village given to him by by Delgado to do all the translation work so he started a company to do translation work that he could build at a crazy amount and get monthly billings so my bet is that when the feds start to break this thing down you're going to find that all of these people had these other companies that they were able to plug into these municipalities because why their guy was the guy who all the contracts went through see got it so now if Delgado controls the town then all of the contracts everything goes through him to get to the town municipality. Now, again, at the same time, and and I'm not alleging that he's done anything wrong because his name hasn't been mentioned in any of the documents. This is all my stuff from, from back in behind the days. But as I'm reading what's going on, I'm starting to understand what is happening. So now, you've got Sandoval, who's been looking to make some extra money with a translation company partnered up with Delgado who he also happens to be the mayor uh, he also happens to be the senator for these people so think they got a perfect tag team Delgado gets in he helps 
He gets and then he brings this guy in because he says, you got all these Latinos. You need to hire Senator Sandoval who will translate this stuff for you. And then essentially, I'm alleging this. I'm not saying this is all fact. But then after that point, then the senator helps you with your roads, your bridges. Your tra all you got to do is keep on getting translation work or start a baloney company, as he said. All right. So now you see. Delgado under the, understood the power of having a state senator in his pocket, and he understood the power of having the most powerful transportation committee chairman in his pocket, especially in the western suburbs where his law practice was growing by leaps and bounds. Now, if you were to take him at his word, you would believe it was all because he was just a great lawyer. But it was a Tribune article from... Uh, 10 years ago, actually September 25th, 2010, that gave us a little bit more insight into this magic little law firm that was exploding in the western suburbs. Now, I got to help you understand that, again, the reason I'm using this as an example is because you'll be able to see this example in all the municipalities throughout the state, a, a variety of municipalities around, across the state. And Mike Delgado is just one of many people who have chopped up the state by the speaker and broken this up. All right, now let me move on to the law firm. If you recall in my last story, I told you that Victor was trying to figure out a way to become the city attorney for the local municipalities because they wanted the constant billing. Now that, quietly, now this is some behind the scenes issues. Now that was quietly causing a conflict between Victor and Michael Noonan, who were partners in the lobbying firm, because Victor could make more money as a lawyer than a lobbyist. And so what he wound up doing was starting a law firm that eventually wound up competing with the lobbying firm. And he started a firm, it was initially Reyes and Bonoma, who it now is now Reyes Curson. So now Victor is trying to figure out how does he become the lawyer for Cicero because he wants to get all of this billing. And he's trying to elbow Mike Delgado out but what he doesn't realize oh and let me let me back up do you, did I tell y'all about the law firms so when Robert Goyevich got ran out of office uh oh we need a better court because this is still sad when Robert Goyevich ran, got ran out of office can we put it on the apple charger or something when Robert Goyevich got ran out of office I'm sorry to have said that three times one of the things that they did was reform the way that lobbying took place, right? And when they reformed the way that lobbying took place, a lot of lobbyists looked to find a different way to make money. So they started, a lot of lobbyists who were lawyers became, a lot of lobbyists who became lawyers really worked to blow up their law firms because the law firm allowed them to bill and make money, but also have confidentiality, right? It allowed them to have confidentiality. And so what you saw was a lot of lobbying firms were trying to grow their business. Um, and what you can, when you compare the legal fees to the retainers, again, if I can bill at $300 an hour, for 50 hours for 40 hours a week and I pay a young guy 25 or $50 or $100 an hour then I get to make all of that money and you are quadrupling tripling your money and so we'll talk about the whole law firm lobbyist thing because what you see right now is a lot and even if you saw the McLean stuff they're all lobbyists and lawyers because they have confidentiality they can protect themselves they can then cut different type of deals and say oh I'm just doing law work when actually they're lobbying so, but do you understand that? But the also, I want you to understand that the law firm is also a way for Madigan to reward his top fundraisers, donors, and people that help him out. See, what happens is Lord Delgado wasn't trying to be a lobbyist. He was trying to be a lawyer, but he only, not only did he grow his firm, he also realized that by being the legal counsel and having oversight of all contracts, he could make money coming and going. 
Bingo! Because as a municipal attorney, he got a piece of everything, right? Because now he sets up, he could allege, I'm alleging, he could have potentially set up these companies that then do business or put partners in the companies. So not only does he get the billing from the town, but he also gets the money from a percentage of what he's getting from his friends. Now I'm alleging this. I'm not saying this is the same. I'm not saying this is what happened. I'm saying I'm alleging that this is how these things work. So being the shrewd operative that he was, Delgado created a relation, uh, quartered a relationship with the most powerful man in the state, that being Speaker Mike Madigan. Now, because the relationship with Madigan no list uh because of his relationship with madigan there'd be no local municipality in his territory so you know how like for how many y'all know some of y'all know about the streets and about the game right so you know like if you got a deck right or like everybody got their own little set this is their area so essentially what Madigan would do is establish these protected areas for people that were part of his crew and then say, you can have everything that's moving in this area as long as I get a piece. Now, what's, I'll show you how that works in a little bit. But so for insurance, he'd make sure well, the way that these guys protected their industry or protected their territory was they were making they were raising between a hundred and a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year they bundle for the speaker and in 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 bundling that hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year then the speaker would sort of bless you right he'd be like okay you got this area you know it's going to have a big project there you can but as and as you can run all of that as long as you make sure my guys eat got it so now if I give you an area and say this is your deck, you can do whatever you want in this area just as long as we get a piece. And if I call you, then you got to put this person on. Does that make sense? All right. So now Delgado wanted to become a made member of the Illinois Minotti. So before he came up with the master plan, but let me back up. Because before he came up with the master plan to build the law firm, he was a hustler just like most young entrepreneurs. And he had interest in a variety of companies. He had a lot of irons in the fire because he was trying to make them all. You know how they talk about multiple streams of revenue, revenue streams. Guess who one of the companies that Mike Delgado was a partner in? Ready? Safe speed. Mike Delgado was an original partner in Safe Speed. But when he became a made member of the Illinois Minotti, he decided that Safe Speed, remember, because now you're making money. Safe Speed is a little baby company trying to grow. It's a good idea, but nobody thinks it's going. And now you got this law firm where you've got 20 people billing at $50,000 an hour and all that good stuff. So you know what he says? I don't have time to be in safe speed. So guess what he does? He goes and gets his self-proclaimed best friend, Omar Manny, into the company. Now, if you think of it in the most simple way, the way he got him in the company was because he wanted to make the two-way money, right? If my man gets in the company, he's a partner, I get a piece of whatever, and I'll approve the contracts to put the in these municipalities. Plus, I got my boy Sandoval on the team, so I can have him go lean, and now I can get a piece of all of this and approve the contract and sit back with my hands off. Now, let me begin. Again, I'm just alleging this. I'm not saying this is what happened. I'm saying this is what I'm putting together, right? So now what you've got is... A whole conspiracy, but now Delgado's making so much money. But you know, when you start making money, you won't, you don't want to miss none of it. So, like I told you, he puts his self-proclaimed best friend into Safe Speed to protect his interests. Now, who is that person that he puts in the company? Remember the guy that I told you, the mole, Omar Manny. Omar Manny now gets Mike Delgado's piece of safe speed. Now the company is blowing up, etc. It's going up. It starts to grow. It starts to move fast. And guess what? Mike's best friend is now a partner in the company. 
Now, at this point, is all this starting to make sense to y'all? Are you all are you all understanding all the pieces that I'm 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 breaking down for you right now? So, in case you aren't, let me put the connection together. So, what I want to do is I want to take you back. Let's go back in the way back machine. And let's go to the Tribune article written by David Kidwell in 25th in September 25th, 2010. It was titled Injustice Deal, All Roads Lead Back to Madigan. Now, where's justice? Justice is in that southwest side that's in that territory that speaker is given. Uh, Mike Delgado. In the article, it describes a phone call that then Mayor Chris Wasowitz received a phone call from the Speaker of the House recommending Delgado as the village attorney. Now, can you imagine if the Don calls you up on the phone? Hello. I have a favor. I want you, you should really consider. Now, I want you to be clear. The Speaker is the, is, is a G at this. So he didn't do anything. He didn't make no threats. He asked a person to consider him. But you know, if you know that the Don is asking you to consider it, you might as well just go ahead and hire him. Now, at the same time, we can play real stupid if we want to, but y'all know that if somebody, if the, if the G call you and say, this is what I need you to do, you got an option, do it or die. Right? In this case, what the speaker wanted to do was have someone uh, in that article. It highlighted the fact that after hiring Delgado, there was a $10 million interchange that was going in from the tri-state. Now, a $10 million interchange is going in from on the tri-state. Now, at the same time, Victor had just engineered Senator Sandoval becoming the senator for Speaker Mike Madigan. So now here's what we got. We got a $10 million interchange going in on the tri-state. The speaker has called you and asked you to hire the attorney who is also the best, is now rocking with Senator Sandoval, who is what? The chair of the transportation Committee. See the racket? See it? So now if you're a small town mayor and the, and the speaker says if you hire this guy, he can help you with your development. He can help you. Grow. So now what do you do as the mayor? You hire Delgado. And now Delgado, what does he do? He opens the town up for plundering. Now I'm telling you all of this because it's all going to circle back because the, the village of justice is where Presidio Capital which was the other company of Omar Manny got in trouble with the feds in justice Illinois so now here's what you got here's what you got you got Delgado has started to make real money, so he ain't got time to be playing with this little bitty red light camera company that's growing up. So he says, I'm going to put my man in your company and he'll watch my, he'll watch it for me. Now the company is like, you sold your interest, but his man know that he really working for him. Y'all know how that work, right? So now he's watching and as the company grows, they start saying, Here's some ideas as to what we need to do. Well, y'all, check this out. Now Delgado has Sandoval. Let me back up. I back up. Let me back up. Back up. So Delgado's now making real money. His man Omar Manny who we now find out is a federal mole, he inserts him into a company. Now, now I don't know how many mob movies you watch, but if you bring the, the, mob, the mole into the family, you got a problem. So now, here's what you got. You got Delgado with his self-proclaimed best friend, 
now having a part of safe speed, but also being turned on to all of these elected officials that are who? Delgado's clients. So now if you think about this, all of the people who have been gotten right now, who are under investigation, raided, etc., they have one common denominator. They are clients of this attorney. Now, if the attorney then turn this guy on and everybody's getting indicted for the relationship that this guy brought to you, you gotta ask two questions. One, is he snitching? Is he a federal mole? And are they working together? Did they start that way? And two, who else has to worry? Because again, what we know right now is that Delgado turned all of these people that are now in trouble onto the federal mole. Think about that. Think about if all of your friends started going down and getting federal indictments and going to j and you introduced them to the person. So now, let me help y'all understand what's going on now. So now, people are starting to look around and say, okay, wait a minute, because now everybody knows that Safe Speed, everybody that's involved knows that Safe Speed wasn't doing the bribes, that the feds were working with Omar Manny to deliver the bribes. But if he was working, how did he get close enough to all these people to deliver the bribes? How did Omar Manny meet Senator Sandoval? and come to trust Senator Sandoval. How did Omar Manny come to know and trust the mayor of Oak Brook Terrace or the mayor of, of Jeff Tobolsky or the mayor of... And so now, what we've got to figure out is what are the connections, as I've told you. So, uh, at the same time Delgado realizes he's a made man, his power and influence will grow in these local municipalities and he'd be able to make money, again, he pawns off his guy to everybody else. And his guy then is the reason that everybody else is in trouble. So now we've got, so I just want to recap. Let me just recap this for you real quick. We've got Senator Sandoval who implemented the plan put together by the lobbyists, right? So we got Senator Sandoval. Then we got Senator Sandoval putting together the plan that the lobbyists had to to rot to pillar, pilfer pillage safe speed with the help of who? Omar Manny, who they connected. Right? Now, Omar Manny turns out to be a federal mole that was given to everybody by who? The attorney, Mike Delgado. So now in yourself, because I'm asking myself, who's the snitch? But let me take you another step further. Don't forget, you still got the beef between the law firm that Victor Reyes had and the lobbying firm that he had. So now guys, and I, did I mention that Victor Reyes and Senator Sandoval were best friends? So guys, now what we've got right now is, so I've introduced you to all the, to not all the players, but the key players. Now, if I am in the Southland, uh, not the Southland, if I'm in the, in the Western suburbs, I got to tell you, if I'm in the Western suburbs, I got to tell you, I got to be looking around saying, who can I trust? Who brought these people to me? And what did I talk about? Now, I, I, I got to point something out and I'm going to do this because these are my people. So now that we just did this whole rig, this whole, remember how we just went through this whole thing? So now, if you are the attorney 
who could have potentially brought the federal mole to everybody if you're not a federal mole yourself. If you brought them to the table, now what do you have to do as the fellas are looking at you saying, where did, you, where did this person come from? You as the attorney got to find somebody else to blame. And so now what you see happening in the space of Delgado is as all these mayors are starting to ask questions because you brought a federal mole to them, he's got to find somebody to blame. And guess who he's going to blame? He's blaming safe speed, even though he safe speed, allegedly. It's the Illinois Minati, y'all. Oh, Sandoval, oh, shoot. Sandoval and Reyes were besties, but Sandoval was jealous of Reyes because Reyes was making a killing and Sandoval was like, I make you all this money and you aren't paying me. And Reyes would always tell Sandoval, if you want to make money, get out of the business and become a lobbyist. But here's the thing. See, no, lobbyist. Because he could have made it. But see, Sandoval's like, but see, everybody wants to be slicker than a can of oil. So instead, again, he came up with a, a better racket, which is, I'll just have a translation company. And every time you open up in a new city, I'm going to be your translator for all your work. And so just realize that sometimes when people was claiming for bilingual stuff, it wasn't because they was concerned about bilingual. It was concerned because they get paid by the word they translated. See how that worked? Meanwhile, we're all watching like, oh, I can't believe this is happening. Hey, y'all. This is the Illinois Minati. Maurice, you said tell on somebody else. I'm not telling on nobody. This is all rumor, innuendo, and speculation. This is really my interpretation of what I have been seeing go on um, and things that I've heard and know. But I guess my question to everybody right now is, because this is the thing that's so crazy to me right now in Illinois, is that even with the context clues, everybody tries to pretend like it ain't happening. Mm. So I'm going to tell you, if the federal mole claimed to be the best friend of the person that got you and you got arrested and they brought the person to you, got to ask some questions. See, the thing I think is sometimes, now I've heard on, on numerous occasions that when the feds get you, they give you a license to steal. And so, but and here's the thing that you all got to understand. For one whole year, the feds were giving envelopes to Omar Manny to set up people. For one year, the federal government was giving Omar Manny money to set people up. Now, if who introduced you to Omar Manny, you've got to ask yourself that question. How does one person get so far into everybody's business? He's already got three mayors, a senator, and how many more? You got to ask yourself that question. You have to. If you don't, you are doing yourself and your people a disservice. Hey, y'all. This has been Illinois Minati. Did I? Did I? Oh, I got two more things I got to tell you. So I want to know. Was So I got questions. Do you think? We know what Manny was cooperating. Do you think that he? Did, do you think that Delgado knew he was a cooperating? Do you think they were conspiring together? That's my first question. Uh, not to mention, you all need to understand that Victor Reyes moved Senator La Steve Landek out of the way so that he could put Senator Sandoval as Speaker Madigan's uh, senator at the same time that that $10 million interchange was coming. Now remember, they were going to chop that money up. If you pay attention to the article, if you read the article, a lot of the people that were to benefit were clients of that whole organization. And I just got to tell you one more thing, y'all. You got to understand that the way this thing is set up, all of the lobbyists and the lawyers, if they kick up to the speaker, then they are blessed and they get a protected business interest. 
Uh, now we got center. So I did that. That uh, in my mind's eye, I have to wonder what happened to the rest of the mayors and managers uh, represented by the lawyer or the law firm. What are they thinking right now? And how much money? How much was Manny kicking up to Delgado? Because think about this. Can you imagine all those mayors? And I'm saying if that was happening. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying it happened. I'm alleging that it happened. But if that was the case, just think about all those mayors that were making decisions, thinking that it was a, on the up and up, and it was really a up and hustle. What do you think? Hey, y'all, this has been Illinois Minotti. Um, just in case you did not see, let's make sure you remember all the players, right? We got Mike Delgado, attorney. Mike Delgado introduced everybody to the federal informant, Omar Manny. Omar Manny was then responsible for bringing down Senator Sandoval. At the same time, Senator Sandoval was busy implementing the plan by the lobbyists who were competing with each other. Because remember, the lobbyists were busy trying to figure out how to rape, rob, and pillage safe speed while the law firm was trying to figure out how they could displace Delgado and rape, rob, and pillage the municipalities. And that in, the, in the midst of all that is us poor taxpayers. Hey, y'all, this has been Illinois Minotti, season two. Episode 3. Did you all get any information out of that? Did you learn anything? Yes, sir. All right, y'all. So, questions, comments, concerns, I'm going to say. Can y'all do a favor? Take a moment, share the broadcast. Let me say what's up to everybody who's out there. What up, Alvin E. Norton? What up, Regina Gibson? What up, Brother Patai? What up, Tamiko Holt? What up, John Rembert? What up, Monty Blanco? What up? Hey, can I tell y'all something? Uh... Uh, can I also tell you that Rob Bogoyevich agreed that the Illinois Minotti is a real thing? And he was a victim of it. Uh, shout out to Yvonne Davila. What up, Maurice? Uh, Newman, what up? Laverne Smith Bell, what up, Alvin E. Norton? What up, La Leah Charrier? What up? Uh, 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 Randy Spann, what up? Kenny Cool, what's up? Regina Gibson, Vin Von Doe. Uh, uh, did I get anybody? Did I miss anybody? Y'all take a moment to share the broadcast. Edline Dave Sigler. What up, Stanton Helms? What up, Hassan? All right, y'all. What up, Brenda Rogers? What up? Who else? I got Kyle, El Kyle Edwards, what up? What up, Marilyn Sturden? What up, Patricia Cunningham? What up? Shut up! I come I read what I want to read, because I can read now. You smart. I smart. All right, y'all. So I hope you all enjoyed Illinois Minotti tonight. Can you do me a favor? Can you take a moment and share the broadcast? Hey, I think the set, the set looked kind of good today, too. You know what I'm saying? I think the set looked pretty good. Y'all give Big Swill a shout out for that. He did a good job except for the curtains, but I'll let that be for next week. All right, y'all. It's your man, Mace Jackson, and I'm about to be out of here. It is Illinois Minotti, the podcast. Until next week, we out of here. Peace.